Well, 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 guys. Welcome back. Wow. <laughs> it's it's kind of been a while. Welcome to Doki Doki Exit Music. Now, it's a Doki mod, yes. I'm sure you guys are probably aware of that. But as you can see by the, you know, the thumbnail and the title, it seemed kind of interesting and it kind of struck... It struck me as something that might be worth playing, alright? I don't know really anything about this mod whatsoever other than it's about Natsuki for the most part. She seems to be the main focus. I mean, she's really big. <laughs> Good for you, Natsuki. But before we get started, guys, I want to address something and it's about the Doki mods, okay? I've gotten so many emails. You guys don't even know how many emails I've gotten for people to request, like, for me to play their Doki mods. Um, I just came back from Anime Expo recently. And what I got the most when people met me, uh, they, you know, they would tell me that, Hey, I love your videos. I really liked watching your Doki videos. And I realized, like, man, how much of a big impact the Doki Doki Literature Club had on my channel. And of course, I mean, we're playing other things now, and I am trying to move on from it. But, you know, I, I really like the game. So I thought, you know, let's, let's, let's try to play this. This is actually a demo. And, uh, it just seemed interesting, so if it's not, I really honestly don't know. Uh, by the way, links to the creator will, you know, be down below. I'll be sure to link if you guys, uh, to try it. I don't know if we'll finish the entire thing. It shouldn't be too long. But yeah, so many of you guys, uh, said that you liked the game, and, uh, it, it really did mean a lot to me. It, it's like, any- it doesn't matter what, you know, anything that you guys like from me really just mean- it means a lot to me. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. But what I wanted to say is that if I'm not playing your mod, don't take it personally. I can't play all the mods. Alright, I just play, I'm just playing, you know, I'm trying to keep my channel alive and I'm just playing whatever seems kind of interesting to me at the time. It may be another game, it may be this, so I'm just kind of taking it as it goes. It's not personal, alright, and I want to say that. So why not? Let's just give this a try. Let's load it up. Our new game, new game this. Good old scrub pie. And if you don't like Doki, don't worry. I have plenty of other videos. <laughs> it's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori. But Sayori isn't answering her phone. I consider going to her house to wake her up. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. I also, I also didn't mention that it's blue. <laughs> Blue, guys. Besides, I told her yesterday that things would be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs and what I want to give her. To heck with it, I'll go get her. I grab the cupcakes Natsuki and I made yesterday and make my way to Sayori's. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. She really is a heavy sleeper. No, no! We're really getting into this now? Okay, I, I've been spoiled slightly. I think she'll be alive. <laughs> I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. Isn't that more like something a boyfriend would do? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on the door. Yeah, yeah, we know. We know. Wake up, dummy. There's no response. Alright, we might have to, uh, we might have to censor this because YouTube, uh, uh, my last video where I talked about Doki Doki, they did not like it. So, uh, so I'm just saying, we probably can't show it. Oh, she's alive! Yay! <laughs> Screw pie! Uh, Sayuri stands at the foot of her bed in a long rope. Aw, oh, no. It's tied to- oh, no. In the shock of the moment, I release my grip on the cupcakes. What the F? What the freak? It's not what it- Like heck, it's not what it looks like. I'm sorry, Screw pie. I can't believe this. Sayori wouldn't do something like this. Jesus, Sayori. I should have known it was this bad. Sayori drops the noose to the floor. Sayori, why haven't you talked to anyone about this? I don't want to waste people's time. I mean, I mean, I'm, it's no like offense to the creator, but we kind of done this in mods. That's one of the reasons too that I stopped playing a lot of Doki mods is the fact that like, you know, a lot of them overlap with the same topics and it's kind of like telling the same story over again. Again, it's nothing personal. I know it's like, you know, a, a, it's, a, it's a huge part of the game, but you know, just gonna kind of skip over this part. You guys know the story that's been told, okay? So to summarize it guys, basically we're taking Sayori to get help because for obvious reasons, like we've done this in mods before, so that's what I was trying to tell you guys. So we caught her, you know, but obviously, you know, luckily before she did it and she's gonna survive, thank God, but we're taking her to the hospital to get some help, which is probably a great thing to do. I'm sitting down in the waiting room outside of the doctor's office, patiently waiting for Sayuri to return. I'm anxious. My phone buzzes quietly. I remember that today was supposed to be the day of the festival. The tent is from, or the text is from Monica. What the heck am I saying? So we skipped the festival in order to, you know, help save Sayori, which is, you know, it's what a friend does. Where are you? I have to reply. I'm busy. Really, Scrubpie? Please don't tell me you've got cold feet about the poems or something. It's a bit more serious than that. What's going on? I don't know if I can tell you right now, but it's serious, okay? You gotta believe me. Fine. Just hurry up and bring Sayori with you. I look up at the door. 
Through the small window, I could see Sayuri breaking down in her chair, heading rest head resting on the doctor's desk. I feel terrible, knowing that I let uh, her reach such a point due to my own negligence. Behind me, the door leads from the entrance to the waiting room, swings open, and a couple of nurses walk by. But my phone buzzes again in my hand, and I turn uh, my attention back to it. It's just me and Yuri here, dang it! Why? Wait, 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 wait. Where's Natsuki? <laughs> I don't know, please get here quick and bring Sayuri, okay? It's a personal issue. I can't promise anything, but I'll, I'll try to get to the festival before it's over, okay? So, I'm not really sure in, the, in this mod, like, if if uh, if Monica is evil or not. Maybe, I mean, perhaps she is. I have absolutely no idea, though. Okay. I I, I also wonder why it's called exit music. <laughs> like, like, exit music, like, when you exit, is it supposed to be, like, dramatic? I don't know. That's the only thing I can think of. A couple of minutes of idle waiting pass before I get another message from her. Forget it, everyone's here already and they're waiting. We have to cancel. I return the phone to my pocket, running my hands through my hair. Why now? I feel terrible for Sayori, the fact that she's in such pain right now and how oblivious I was to all of it. But on the other hand, I also feel like I put Monica and Yuri on the spot in front of all of our classmates. Monica and Yuri? That reminds me of something that Monica told me. Where is Natsuki? That's, that's where we're getting to the to the 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 the, the bare bones of this mod. Where is she? <laughs> Where's Natsuki? Suddenly the door to the waiting room opens again and another nurse walks by. However, she's accompanied by someone familiar. No! <laughs> Natsuki! What did they do to you? What did they do to you? Natsuki, are you okay? She quickly turns back and runs the way she came, exiting the hospital in tears. I jump out of my seat to speak to her, but I notice the nurse staring at me suspiciously. I take a seat once more, anxious about how Natsuki... About how... Oh my god. I gotta take this in. Oh, we are taking the ruler. I'm taking the ruler now! Give me their names! What's their names? I don't care. What's their names? I take a seat once more, anxious now about uh, Natsuki's well-being as well as Sayuri. Uh, excuse me. What happened to her? She explains how Natsuki wandered into the hospital, bloody and bruised, looking for help. Poor Natsuki. Then, she then consciously asks if I had anything to do with Natsuki's injuries. Christ, no! God, I don't even know what's going on! I had to bring my friend here, she tried to... I stopped myself. I doubt Sayuri would want me to talk about her struggle so openly. Not now, anyway. Well, listen, it's serious, okay? That's all I can tell you. It's, it's, it's just serious! <laughs> you just gotta believe me! I bite my lip as the nurse continues on her way. My phone buzzes again. Are you sure you don't know where Sayuri and Natsuki are? I already told you I don't know. I can't tell her about Natsuki either. Chances are it's her own personal issue and she deal with it in her own way. Well, little does he know that it's probably Monica's fault. Still, maybe I should text her. It doesn't matter anyway. We had to cancel our performance. People are complaining about the cupcakes not being here. Oh god. The cupcakes, the ones that I dropped. Yuri's gone for some fresh air. Oh wait, well you know what that means. Oh god. Jesus, I'm sorry, okay? My hands are tied here. I can't do anything to help right now. K, whatever. Oh, but she hits you with the K. You know that she's very disappointed. Thanks a lot, Scrub Pie. Now I've really freaking made Monica mad because I couldn't bring myself to tell her what happened. I decided to text Natsuki quickly about what I just saw. Well, personally, if I was in that situation, I'd be like, well, you know, you don't know exactly how serious this is, so I'm not gonna be worried. You know, obviously it's unfortunate, but it's like, we got some more important matters in a festival right now. A couple of minutes pass with no response. The message doesn't even mark as, it's not even marked as red, so we text Natsuki. The office door swings open and Sayuri emerges. Scrubpie, are you okay? Uh, not really, I'm just stressed out. How about you? I don't really want to talk about it. Are you sure? Because I'm here for you, I can just... Scrubpie, please. Can we just drop this? I just don't want to make a big deal out of it, especially in front of the other club members. I stand up. Sayuri, I don't think you understand how big of a deal this really is. You nearly... You nearly... I can't say it. YouTube don't want me to say it. I'm being dead serious. <laughs> I think you should go home and rest for a couple of days, okay? I guess I'll have to, right? <sighs> Sayuri lets out a small bout of almost nervous laughter. It's a good idea, at least. You know that? You know what? <laughs> But what about the festival? I hesitate. I don't want Sayuri to feel like it's her fault that the performance was cancelled, but it is. <laughs> but yeah, I get it. I totally get it. I decided to start with Natsuki's absence. Well, Natsuki didn't actually show up either. Monica had to cancel the performance, unfortunately. You didn't- you didn't tell her, did you? About- I didn't. Unless you want to tell her about it yourself, she won't know. Okay? Sayuri nods. I think I'll tell her. So she knows why. Why her plans for the festival were, ru were ruined? I can't- I can tell what she's gonna say. It wasn't your fault, Sayori. None of this is. Sayori grabs my hand tightly, rending it- rending- rending it in a vice-like grip. You can talk to her if you really want to. 
Heck, she'd probably even give a better advice than, than me. Maybe. Did you tell my parents? I sigh. I did, yeah. I'm sorry though, I felt like I had to and... Thanks. I was scared I have to tell them myself. Sayuri glances downwards to the pristine floor. I love you, scrub pie. Oh yeah, that's right. This is kind of... Kind of connected to why she did that. I forgot about the real story for a second. Every time one of the Doki's drops a I love you, it's never good afterwards. We know that from uh, Yori, especially. I... Despite her condition, I can't lie to her. It wouldn't be- it would be unfair to her and have her, you know, hopes disrupted like that. I keep my mouth shut. A minute or so passes. Ooh, that's awkward. Anyway, we should get going. There's no point in going to school now. Why? What time is it? It's about midday. We missed the festival and if we turn up now, Monica's just gonna get mad at us. Come on, I'll take you home. We can talk so, some more there. She gently nods, following my lead. We exit the hospital and ride a bus back to her house. I decide to stay with Sayuri in her house just to make sure she's feeling better. We have at least a few hours together, but we spend that time talking and watching shows together. Her mother arrives first, thanking me for letting her know of what happened and I tell her it's no problem. She tells me that Sayuri's father's on his way and that I'm free to leave if I want. After I'm sure she's safe, I leave uh, her with her mother and head home. Entering the kitchen, I flick on the light and start to make myself a sandwich cutting up a tomato. However, I start to wonder about Natsuki. I remember the time I spent with her, our little scuff uh, scuffle over the cupcakes icing. But that bruise, her nosebleed, what the heck happened to her? And who in the right mind would do that to her? I mean, yeah, I feel like we should be a little more concerned about Natsuki. I mean, Natsuki! Possible reasons for her injuries began to circulate inside my head. Maybe she just fell over. She could have gotten into a fight with another classmate of ours, right? Or maybe... No. Surely not. Maybe I'm just overreacting to the situation. It's been a rough day after all. But something she told me while we were reading manga together sticks in my head. I don't even know what my dad would do if he found this. I shiver at the thought. It's the only real reason I can come up with were Nazi's terrible injuries. I also noticed that while I was distracted, I accidentally cut my finger open while slicing the tomato. Holy crap! You already- <laughs> Is she around? <laughs> ah, crap! I wrap my finger in a paper towel, letting the few drops of blood soak into it. Throwing the paper towel in the trash, I think back to Natsuki. I decide that I'll ask her about her father next time I see her. Even if she assures me that I'm wrong, at least I'll know. I, op I eat my sandwich and head upstairs to my room. I collapse into my bed exhausted from the stress that the day had brought me. I drift into unconsciousness within minutes. Two days later. <laughs> we weren't asleep for two days, were we? <laughs> oh, hi, Scrub Pie. I'm back at the literature club. Craning my neck, I look around the uh, club room. It's empty. Yuri and I are the only people here. I leave the classroom door open, expecting the other members to arrive shortly. Hey, Yuri. I sit down on my desk next to her, unpacking my stationary kit as she did with her own. Listen, I know that Monica canceled the club yesterday and I didn't get a chance to talk to you, so I just wanted to say that I'm sorry she had to let our little presentations go. Don't worry about it, Scrub Pie. Monica told me that it wasn't your fault she that you couldn't come. She said it was something serious. Yeah, it was a bit of an emergency. I decided to play down the situation in case Yuri doesn't know the full story. I don't want to worry her after all. Are you alright? Me? Ah, I'm fine. Don't worry about me. It was someone else. Someone close. I see. Well, I hope everything works out for you well, and your friend. I hope so too, Yuri. A moment passes of complete silence. Yuri sat down at her desk, uh, still reading. The glass is still empty aside from us. So, uh, Yuri? She jumps in her chair a little bit. Yes? You haven't seen Monica today, have you? I'm afraid not, Scrippi. She's been in a mood since the festival, unfortunately. Not that I mean to be rude about it, I just didn't- It just meant a lot to her after all. I know it did. That was why I wanted to speak to her. Maybe if I explained why Sayuri and I were absent, then she might forgive me. Well, the both of us. But I promised Sayuri I wouldn't say anything to Monica. Has she- Has Monica said anything about me since the festival? Not really. I mean, she did complain about the three- You know, the three of you were gone. I was kind of thankful that we got to cancel. Not to ruin Monica's plans, though. I'd never do such a thing intentionally. I know you wouldn't, Yuri. Don't worry. I can tell you're too good of a person to be so mean. Besides, you have no reason to want to be- to- to sabotage her like that. Right? <laughs> Yuri falters for a moment, lost for words. No, not at all! <laughs> it's just that. I don't even know if I should be telling you this. Well, I overheard Monica telling about you and Sayuri to one of her friends. I wasn't eavesdropping, though. What did she say? I heard her mention that only good reason to cancel on her festival was if somebody died. What? Monica wouldn't say something like that, right? She's a sweetheart. Besides, not only not only is it egocentric, it's insensitive. Even if she didn't know about Sayuri, it felt like she was it was too close to reality. Wow, that's harsh. Reality, Monica, she's evil. <laughs> Get it guys? I doubt she meant it though. What I mean to say is that she was in no position to say that. I understand that she was frustrated about it, but there's never a good reason to say such horrible things about 
Yuri's words get caught in her throat and she retreats to the confines of her book. I turn to see Monica standing in the doorway giving Yuri an intense glare. She doesn't uh, she doesn't dare to meet Monica's gaze instead concentrating on the portrait of Markov. I wish I could do the same. I swallow. She huffs and starts talking. Where's Sayuri Anatsuki? She stares at Yuri intent uh, intently. Monica's presence intimidates me. I don't know, Monica. I, I haven't seen them. She gives me an uh, acidic stare, her emerald eyes piercing my confident facade. Did Sayuri tell her about the hospital? Are you sure? I... Yeah. Alright then, how come you weren't at the festival, Scrub Pie? I had a family emergency. At this point, I'm practically lying to her face to keep Sayuri's secret safe until she feels comfortable confiding in Monica. Then again, I've known Sayuri for so long, she's pretty much a part of my uh, chosen family at this point. She's like a sister to me. That's why she's depressed. <laughs> so it's more stretching the truth than it is lying to her. Well, that's what I tell myself <laughs> anyway. Right, Monica's not having any of this. Even if she doesn't know what's actually going on, she must know I'm lying. But for Sayuri's sake, I have to keep, you know, Gotta, gotta lie. Monica's demeanor suddenly changes and she looks at the two of us with a wry smile on her face. Okay, you two. Since we're the only ones here, I've decided that we're going to have to cancel today's meeting. Hopefully, there won't be any more emergencies or absences tomorrow. You, well, you made them! Can we talk about that? For a second. <laughs> Monica messes with the files, gets mad about it. <laughs> That's all. You can leave now. Yuri looks up from her book guiltily and packs up, silently dropping the portrait of Markov and her stationary kit into her bag. She scurries out of the classroom without a word. Monica turns her attention to me, expecting me to pack up. I nod to pick up my bag, ex uh, my bag, exiting into the hallway without another word. Walking through the school's dormant hallways, I reach the door to the courtyard, but stopping, placing my head on my palm. I forget my own stationary. I'm an idiot. I return to the clubroom. I return to the clubroom hastily to find my leather pencil case opened. As I swipe into my bag, I realize my pen is missing. The pen. The pen thing. Okay. Hey, I forgot my pen right here, though. <laughs> What's wrong with me? <laughs> a quick glance around, I conclude that I must have lost it earlier. Returning to the courtyard. Uh, court. Courtyard. That's what I just said. I notice Yuri. She's moving hurriedly, clutching her bag tightly against her chest and wiping her face with her sleeve. Yuri? She doesn't notice me at first, so I jog up to catch, uh, catch her. Yuri, what's wrong? Oh, haha, -ha, it's, it's nothing. Really? Really now? <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm alright, really. I don't believe her. My eyes meet Yuri's for a, a brief moment before she looks away. I can tell something terrible happened in a few minutes that we were separated, but what could have brought her to this state? I take hold of her shoulder, trying to slow her down as, uh, so she can face me. She jumps, but complies as she comes to a halt at the school's, uh, school's entrance. Yuri, whatever's on your mind, you can tell me. I am your friend, after all. It's not much. It was, it was just th th something that Monica said. Monica? What could she have said? Well, if you don't mind me asking, what did she say? I, I don't really feel comfortable t talking about it. If you're okay with that, Monica must have said something really hurtful. It's fine, really, I understand. Well, if you're sure about that, you always, you're always welcome to talk to me, though. I guess it'd be nice if you walked with me. Maybe we can talk on the way. Sayuri isn't here, and I've got some time to kill. Besides, I feel like I can't refuse. Not while she's so emotional. Yeah, okay, I'm sure she'd be nice, or it'd be nice. Following Yuri, I take the opposite turn from my usual walk home. Soon enough, I find myself in a part of our town that I rarely visit. The walk between us is mostly silent. Yuri occasionally sniffles, wiping at, uh, wiping at her face. What the heck did Monica say to her? I decide to make some light conversation. Something about writing might be nice. She does take comfort in talking about subjects she's passionate about, after all. So, Scrub Pie, how do you like writing poems? She must have read my mind. Well, I usually like to listen to music while I write. Even if it's just quiet, playing softly in the background, you know what I mean. Really? Most of the time, I just feel like I can only write in silence. It leaves me at my, it leaves me at one with my mind and lets me express my inner thoughts. Though sometimes I do like listening to a soft piano track. Don't the lyrics alter the way you write? Well, yeah, but I guess that's what I'm looking for most of the time anyway. I like for the mood of the music to affect the way I write, really. Unless it's something I especially passionate about, then I can write in just about any condition. Yeah, that actually sounds like an effective technique. I'll be sure to try it out. At this point, Yuri seems to have perked up, her eyes dried. I decided to continue the conversation as I still don't know how much longer I'll take a, it'll take to reach her house. I know Sayuri likes to hum a little tune to herself while she writes. I wonder what Natsuki does. Natsuki. I've been trying to contact her since I saw her in the hospital, but she hasn't responded. What is happening? She hasn't showed up for school at all this week either. God, what could have happened? Was it really her father? I don't want to believe it, but the pieces fit together. Her absence. I mean, I'm hoping that kind of like it's not so obvious because like obviously the obvious 
Obviously, the obvious, obvious thing, guys, is that it's, it's, you know, her dad, which we already know what she said about him. But most of all, the effing bruises. I bite my lip as I feel breathing growing heavy and my blood reaching at a boiling point. If I find out he let a finger on her, I will. I'll. So I'll be honest, I don't disrespect her or anything. Yuri's words derail my train of thought. Natsuki's poems are just a little too simple for my liking. Oh, she's talking about she doesn't like her. I suppose they like a certain edge. I spaced out again. Yeah. Speaking of Natsuki, however, I think we just passed her house then. Wait, wait, what? Which one? Yuri looks at me a little surprised by my urgency. Regardless, she points out the house to me. It's that house if I recall correctly. Uh, right, thanks for that. Why do you need to know? I don't really want to worry about, uh, worry Yuri about Natsuki. Well, I guess I just wanted to... Right. <laughs> well, that's awkward. The rest of the journey is made in silence. I worry that Yuri got the wrong impression, but there's not much I can do. Eventually, we arrive signaling her wave goodbye. You know, Skripai, you're quite different when no one's around. When it's just two of us. Oh, she's so- oh my god. She's so happy. Listen, I'd love to stay and talk. I really would, but I- oh, it's fine. I- I get it. You have places to be. Her head darts towards the direction of Natsuki's house for a moment. It's fine. I've got some writing to do anyway. She turns and starts to walk to the door. No, please, don't get the wrong idea, Yuri. I'm not really- it's fine, Skripa. I could take a hint. I'll see you tomorrow- oh, she was crying! Oh, no! Before I can finish my explanation, she's already entered her house. I feel terrible knowing that Yuri probably bl blames herself for my rejection, but I leave quickly regardless. Hey, there was no obligation to be with her? I don't have any obligation to be with these girls, okay? Except for Natsuki, you know. I, I can make an exception. As I turn the corner and approach Natsuki's house, my attention is directed, uh, directed upwards. On the second floor balcony, a large, heavily built man leans against the railing, smoking a cigarette. Is that her dad? Jesus Christ. He's on the phone and I can't help but overhear his conversation. The man mutters something about having business to attend to, but promises to be wherever the caller wants within the hour. My stomach sinks. Business? If he means what I think he does. Backtracking Yuri's route, I make my way back to the school, then to my house from that. Fumbling with my keys, I unlock the door. I enter my bedroom hurriedly and get changed uh, out of my uniform and, uh, into some dark clothing. Oh, we're gonna do some little sneaky snake stuff. Oh, it's nighttime. Wow, the editing. That's pretty cool. A short jog brings me back to her house and I take a seat within a bus stop on the street opposite of her, uh, stalking out her father. I ponder over what if he's already gone, perhaps, and I missed him leaving. Or perhaps he's still dealing with business. After a few minutes, however, I'm proven wrong by the sound of an uh, engine revving up and a new expensive-looking performance car emerging from the driveway of Natsuki's house. It speeds away uh, around the corner within seconds, and once I'm certain that it's gone, I move over to Natsuki's house and ring the doorbell. I wait. Nothing. I press down on it again. Once more, no answer. Growing over anxious, growing ever anxious, I knock on the door heavily, aggressively, uh, banging my ballad fist. <laughs> I don't know some of these words. My ballad fist into the door. A moment of silence. Then from a second floor window, I see a curtain pull back, a flash of pink, and just as quickly, it's replaced once more. I watch it intensely, waiting for any sign of movement until I hear the sound of the door uh, chain being unhinged and the devil turning. My heart is ready to jump out of its chest. I don't know what I'll, I'll be greeted by, but I wait it nervously. Skripai, what the heck are you doing here? It's Natsuki, thank God. Natsuki, oh, thank God, I can rest. My, ah, uh, I was so worried about you, Natsuki. Natsuki! <laughs> <laughs> Do I look genuinely worried, guys? What happened to your bruises? What bruises, scrub pie? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> She's playing dumb ever, uh, even though I saw her. What could have happened to her for her to be so devoted to keeping a secret? Before I can reply, she grabs me by the collar of my shirt and yanks me into the foyer. Pretty sure that's how you say that. I never really knew. Hey, how do you... Uh, how do you know where I live? <laughs> uh, it's not... Now's not the time for that. Has she been drinking? Better question is, where have you been? I haven't been feeling very good for the past few days. No need, no need to be so mean about it. Does she expect me to believe, after, uh, believe her after what I saw? Natsuki, I know something's wrong. I saw you at the hospital, remember? Oh, uh, that? <laughs> she giggles. That was nothing. Don't worry about, it, about that, okay? There's uh, much worse to be worried about. <laughs> what do you mean? Come with me. I could do with another glass anyway. Uh, she's 18, but that's still- wait, in Japan? I think it's 20. Oh, I think when I went there, it said with the, the drinking, it was ages 20, okay? I may have had a sip, okay? I- I really don't- I really don't drink, like, I really don't drink a lot at all. Like, it was just, like, an exception. 
I wanted to try it, okay? Stop judging me. As she moves, she begins erratically wobbling as though she's having trouble walking. She holds tighter into my arm for support. I Okay, actually, I have to know now. I really do need to know. Yes, I'm a weeb. <laughs> she stumbles and nearly trips. I catch her wrapping my arm around her chest and pulling her upright. Thanks. Uh, it's not it's not like her. Normally, if I grabbed her, for whatever reason, she'd freak out and call me gross or something of the sort. But here, she didn't even flinch or say anything about it. Something feels off. I release my grip on her reluctantly as she's still staggering her way along. I assist in moving her up the stairs, making sure she doesn't fall and knock us both uh, back onto the steps. We finally reach up the stairs and Natsu guides me to her room. Her room is a mess. Her floor is littered with small ripped up pieces of paper. Picking one up, I recognize one of the protagonists of uh, Parfait Girls. Oh no, not the manga, no. Her dad ripped up the manga. The cover is heavily laminated cardstock and is ripped in two. There was no way Natsuki was able to tear that in half herself. Not only that, but she had no reason to either. But I can think of someone who does. There's a large bottle of red wine capped open lying on the side of her bed. Only a small drip uh, escapes, staining her bed sheet with crimson. There can't be much left of it. I know she'd been drinking, I could tell from the moment she opened the door. Natsuki, you haven't drunk all of that yourself, right? She looked flustered. Of course I have, you dummy! <laughs> That's a bit much, isn't it? Well, that doesn't matter. I haven't even finished anyway! She retrieves the bottle from the bed. I reach the hand out of it, uh, a ticket from her. Natsuki! No, it's mine! She holds her bottle uh, just out of reach and tries to push me away. She's too weak, however, I simply move her arm aside. Come on, that's enough. Scrub pipe, please? I need this. Something about the way she said that uh, sent a pang of dread through my body. Before I reach my arm out to stop her a second time, the remainder of the bottle contents are gone. Looking at her bedside drawer, I see Natsuki's phone. It's overturned so I can see her case. The case is glitterly, glittery and pink. This hick... Alright, this... Uh, this... Uh, I don't know. How, to, how do you hick? Uh, I can't do it. Drink is nice, scrub pie. Now it's can talk to me. <laughs> I know something is going on with your dad. Okay, this is not a laughing matter. I'm just sorry. I was laughing at myself. Please, I just want to help. But I can't if you won't tell me what's going on. This is all the help I need. She collapses onto her bed and giggles. I haven't felt this so this happy in so long. I only grow more uneasy hearing that. If this is the length, if this is the length she has to go through in order to escape her demon, just how bad is the demon she's trying to escape from? As Natsuki begins to snore, her grips on the wine bottle falters and it rolls off the bed onto the floor. To my surprise, it doesn't shatter. Instead, it rolls under her bed. Shaking my head, I bend down to pick up the bottle that rolled under the bed. Reaching my hand underneath the bed, I could fill a wine bottle, or the wine bottle, and something else. What the? I pull both from underneath the bed. Placing the wine bottle on her bedside drawer next to Natsuki's phone, I take a look at what I recovered. It's a white container and made of plastic. Wait, this isn't right? This was a bottle of pills. Looking for a description, I inhale sharply as I realize that these are morphine tablets. I turn to look at Natsuki's fast asleep, uh, fast asleep as I worried. Oh my god. I just, I desperately checked the label on the back for a date of uh, prescription two, two days ago. She's trying to overdose. An icy sweat runs down my forehead. Oh, that would give me chills, I'm not gonna lie. An icy sweat runs down my forehead as I begin to panic, running my hands through my hair. She stops snoring. I violently shake Natsuki's seemingly lifeless body. Oh god, she, I can't even read. Please, Natsuki, please wake up. I grab her hand, it's climbing and it's much cooler than it should be. I put my ear next to her mouth to check to see if she's breathing. Thankfully she is, but it's faint. I take her by the shoulders and pull her into a sitting position. I crouch down next to her, supporting her, Natsuki. I contemplate calling an ambulance, worrying that it'll draw too much attention to her house. Ugh. I don't care what happens as long as she lives. I reach into my pocket and, ugh. My phone isn't here either. I reach onto her bed uh, beside the table, gripping Natsuki's phone tightly. I bring it to my face and press down the power button. The screen lights up, but from the... But from behind a shattered display, I try to make an emergency call, but the screen is unresponsive to my touch. Oh god, she's like opening her eyes. What the heck? Dropping my phone, I pull Natsuki in close to me, hoping and praying that she wakes up. I begin to sob, ter uh, terrified for my life, or for her life. But Natsuki begins to cough erratically. I'm simultaneously pa panicked and relieved. She opens her eyes and unsteadily rises to her feet with my assistance. Natsuki, please tell me you're okay. I... I... She falls silent. Oh! <laughs> well, of course they had to use that, you know? My nose is assaulted by the mixed scent of bile and wine as it splashes on the floor in front of me. Dear God. Dang, this is, this is pretty intense. I realize that she got some on my arm. It, it, it stings? Well, at least I would have gotten the deadly mixture out of her body. But she's still in trouble. Natsuki turns to me half-conscious, pleading. Scrub pie, help me. She stumbles back, landing in a sitting position on her uh, bed. I don't want to die. Look at me, okay? You won't hear me. You hear me? I won't let you die. 
Natsuki, listen to me, okay? I'll be right back. She nods weakly, barely aware of her surroundings. I need to find her something to eat. Hopefully, it could have, you know, should absorb what's left of the alcohol. Bolting down the stairs, I reach the kitchen within seconds. I swing open every cupboard I see along with the refrigerator. Nothing. Not even a slice of bread. When did, when did she last eat? Exiting the kitchen, I look around uh, the house. Hurrying back to Natsuki, I check up on her. She's as pale as ever, but she's conscious at least. She weakly uh, raises her head to look at me. Hey, Natsuki, I need you to pay attention to me, okay? Just whatever you do, don't go to sleep, okay? Please. She tries to mutter something, but it's un uh, uneligible. I have no choice but to leave her again. I've searched- uh, you just carry her! She's like a feather! <laughs> I've searched everywhere in the house besides her father's bedroom. As I approach the door, I notice that it's locked. I ran the door multiple times before the frame gives away. Whoa! I tumble onto the floor, now littered with splinters. I rise to my feet and flick the light on. As I search the room for anything that could possibly aid Natsuki, something catches my eye. A few bags of various restaurants, uh, from various restaurants around town. I tear them open to find nothing but empty takeout containers. I return to Natsuki's room. We have to go now. Okay. I help her to a feet, wrapping her arm over my shoulder, holding her hand in place. She'll make it. I'll make sure of it. Where are we going? Somewhere safe. We make our way down the stairs. I keep Natsuki on her feet, though it's proving to be more difficult as she fades in and out of consciousness. Starvation mixed with alcohol and painkillers. Nah, that's not good. It's clearly taken a toll on her, but she isn't dead. We make it to the front door. Within time, uh, feeling like a lost luxury, I shut it behind us, moving through the porch. I can feel Natsuki's tears soaked through my shirt. We reach the gate and I set her down while I open it. I scoop Natsuki off the grass and close the gate behind us. Holding Natsuki close, I move as fast as I can down the street. I just imagine. Ah! Oh god, man, that's gonna be like honestly, it'd be so freaking crazy to go through that. As we approach the glow of the street lights, I begin to feel relieved. I loosen my grip on Natsuki. Can you walk? Yes, I think. I set her down for a moment. Her knees buckle again. I wrap her arm around me and mine around her. Let's go. Okay. I end up supporting her entire way through uh, the town. There is nobody about to call me f for looking suspicious. I'm almost glad that she had a small figure. It certainly makes it so much easier to. That's why she's so small. Her father's been leaving her malnourished and living on and living on fast food. Jesus Christ. Finally, I recognize the familiar view of my house. But if she was living off fast food, wouldn't she be fat? We're not gonna talk about it. <laughs> I see I set Natsuki down on my footstep on uh, on the, the porch. <laughs> Reading. I fumble with my keys for a moment, finally unable to lock the door. I help Natsuki through. She's safe from her father at least. I bring her to the kitchen and sit her down with the, on one of the chairs. Ah, scrub pie, why did you help me? How did you know where I- Don't worry about all that now. Let's just get settled in- Let's just get you settled in for the night. I'm worried that I'll be longer than- I'm worried that it'll be longer than one night. I have a spare bedroom in my house. She'll be able to sleep there. I search through my pantry and my fridge for something she may like. I decided to make some toast and chicken noodle soup. Is that chicken noodle? I haven't had that in so long. Her words break my heart. How long? G give her some freaking soup! How long has she lived like this? I watch the clock as Natsuki eats. It's late. Now that the immediate panic is over, I realize that the poor Natsuki is still drenched in her own stomach acid. Natsuki, I'm going to need you to get changed. What? Not here, silly. I mean, you can get changed in the spare bedroom. But I don't have any of my clothes. You'll have to borrow some of mine. Okay. But only because I have to. Well, here comes her soon dairy ways. Natsuki seems to be in a better shape after her meal. She stands up uh, of her own accord to return a bullet to the kitchen counter. She moves slowly but deliberately. Despite the stink of bile clogging up my nose, I'm relatively calm too. Alright, so everything's kind of getting better. Come on, I'll show you where my room is. Natsuki timidly complies, wrapping her arms around me, but this time it hurts. I inhale sharply. Are you okay, scrub pie? My shoulder is in pain. The adrenaline of the situation has settled. Oh yeah, that's right, we rammed through a door! <laughs> yeah, that would do it. When, Natsuki dad, uh, when Natsuki's dad returns to the house, yeah, I'm alright, don't worry about me. Let's get you cleaned up. There's a shower in the guest room that you can use. We reach the guest room located across the hall from my own bedroom. I motion towards the edge of my bed. Here, sit down for just a moment. Uh, I'll be back with something comfy for you. She sits down. I rush into my bedroom picking out one of the gray tops and a pair of jeans. When I bring them back to her uh, room, she's struggling to take off her socks. I place her fresh clothes on the bed and kneel down to help her take them off. She opens her mouth like she wants to say something but reluctantly lets me. Natsuki has been through so much today. She has uh, next to no strength left. Thanks, scrub pie. I can take it from here. Are you sure? I really don't- All the blood on my uh, body rushes to my face. She's going to have a shower. <laughs> Was I about to indirectly tell her I wanted to help? <laughs> I- Never mind, it's fine. You take your time. I decided that now isn't the best time to question Natsuki about her family. Instead, she just- 
she just needs a soothing sound. She just needs a shoot. She just needs a shower. God, I can't read. Maybe that will take her mind off to tonight's events. Even if only for a few moments. Those few moments would do her a lot of good. As I stand next to the room, Natsuki grips, grasps my wrist gently. Scrub pipe, wait. I wanted to thank you again. I don't... Don't mention it, okay? I'm just glad I got there in time. Natsuki stares me in the eyes. Me too. How did you know where I was? I walked home with Yuri. She was having a bad day, so I went with her. She pointed out your place, and ever since I saw you at the hospital, you haven't left my mind. That's why I decided to, to, to even go. I tried calling you god knows how many times, but you never answered. I cast my mind back to Natsuki's wreck of a phone. I guess I know why. I saw every one of your calls. I couldn't answer because of the stupid screen. All I wanted to do was hear your voice. I couldn't. I just wanted to go back to the club and sit with you under, uh, under the window to read more together. Because when we do, it's the only time I really feel safe. Well, not anymore, of course. Her parfait girl's manga was torn apart. I leave Natsuki to shower. After getting changed myself, I sat on the edge of my bed, gripping the volume of Parfait Girls that I bought for myself on the weekend. The water stops running. The water stops running, and I hear the uh, the door being opened and closed. I wait a few moments before knocking on the door. Natsuki, I have something else for you. Oh, she's got my clothes. <laughs> oh, scrap pie. Natsuki opens the door, looking healthy again. She's out of her dirty clothes and is now wearing my shirt along with her own pants. The top doesn't fit her very well, though. Uh, this shirt's massive on me. I could get you a smaller top of mine if you. I like it. Ooh. <laughs> You don't need to, scrub pie. Are you sure? Yeah. I present the manga to her. I saw what happened to your copy of Parfait Girls back, so I just thought I'd drop mine on it. I thought I'd just give you mine. <laughs> so you can uh, read it, if you want. Natsuki gives me a weak but sincere smile. She reaches out to grab the manga. I love to. Instead of pulling the manga from my hands as I expected, she grabs my wrist and tries to sit me down on the bed next to her. But only if we read it together. Aw, so romantic. That's the least I can do. First having to deal with Sayori. God, how crappy must her home life have been for her to want to escape uh, it like that? Well, I can guess considering the complete lack of food in her house and her face when I saw her in the hospital. Ugh. Hey, Scrub Pie. What? You were just kind of stood there for a second spacing out. God, you're worse than Sayori sometimes, you know. How does she know? I'm sorry, okay? It's fine. I was only teasing, dummy. I... I know that I shouldn't blame her, she doesn't know about Sayuri's condition, and as far as I should, I know, she hasn't seen her in the hospital either. Regardless, that hurt me more than it should have. I moved to the... I moved to the duvet? <laughs> to the the... I move the duvet, as I, as I call that, to the side and sit down next to Natsuki. She pulls the covers over the two of us and we sat up, draped over our laps. We decided to start the volume over again. You're so warm. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't take it, guys. We're now shoulder to shoulder. Natsuki, can you see it okay? Not really. This is so romantic! Oh! Oh, we got a picture? That's pretty cool! I love it when they do original arts and the, and, and the mods. I love it so much. Like, obviously I know, like, it's kind of taken from something else, but it's fine. I'll take it. I'll take it, guys. Much better. My left arm is awkwardly dormant between us. I slide it under the pillow and around her. There we go. We continue to read. Oh, she fell asleep! It's okay. It's okay. I lay there motionless. I dreamed of this moment ever since I really got to know Natsuki. I hate that it had to come due to her circumstances, but regardless, I run my fingers through the sil her silky pink hair. I brush her bangs to the side. She looks so peaceful in her sleep. What is this feeling? I feel a lump in my throat. Just the sight of her is enough to make my heart pound. I don't recognize this. My chest is heavy. It feels like we're... There's a weight on my ribs. It's hard to breathe. This... This is the happiest moment of my life. As I drop the manga to the side of the bed, not even reading anymore, I drift off to sleep. When you drop the anime, that's when you know you're in love. I'm jerked away by the sound of crying. Confused, I open my eyes and turn to look at Natsuki. She's clutching the sleeve of my shirt, holding me tighter than before. She's sobbing into my uh, shirt ferociously. Natsuki, are you... I realize that she's still asleep. Sighing, I lament over Natsuki's nightmares. I'm almost certain that, she's related to, that it's related to her family, but I give her a nudge to wake her up. As she seemingly begins to stir, I try to calm her. Natsuki, it's just a dream. You're okay, you're safe. She opens her eyes. That, that was more than a dream. I watched my dad kill you. Oh, I watched him torture you for saving me. He kept telling me that this was my punishment for leaving. Scrubpa, you shouldn't have helped me. This was wrong. This is wrong. Why, Scrub Pie? Why did you have to get involved? I can't let you do this. Natsuki? Do you want to know the real reason I showed up at your house? I missed you. I missed reading with you. I missed reading your poems. And after the hospital, I knew something happened. I had to make sure you were okay. I was worried sick for days. I felt I had to. 
I'll do anything to assure your safety. I'd gladly be tortured if it meant that you would be happy. Anything, Natsuki, do you understand me? I'll do everything in my power to keep you safe. If my words right now aren't proving I meant it, maybe this will. I rise to my feet and walk to my room. I flick my light on and rifle through my bag. Ah, there it is. Oh no, not a poem. You, I don't know what's happened or where you've been. All I can think about is bruises on your skin. The blood on your nose dripped onto your clothes. Oh my god, why would we write this? The sights, oh, I guess, I guess we were like inspired to write it, right? Because it's all we can think about. I get it. The sight, the sight that broke my mind for that moment, I was frozen in time. I saw you broken, abused. I knew from there on I would save you. Day turned to night, you on my mind. I've been sick with worry if I'm going to do something. I need to hurry. Text after text, call after call, the girl I cared about most is the one I couldn't save after all. I return to the bed, Natsuki turns to face me. I hand her my poem. Aw, oh, she's crying. Screw up, hi. hi. Natsuki leaps from her bed and embraces me tightly. This is so freaking romantic, though. After a few minutes, she eases her grip. I do, I do as well, resting my hands on her waist, hers hanging from my neck. Natsuki lifts herself up to, uh, up onto her tiptoes and pecks me on the cheek. I want to go back to sleep, but I, I want you to stay with me. I nod wordlessly, and Natsuki gently escorts me to the bed. We drift into the void of unconsciousness again together. That's all for now. Ah. <laughs> well, guys, honestly, that was better than I expected it to be. Um, you know, it's not exactly completely new to us, but at the same time, it told it in such a way that was I felt it was really good. I felt I, I think that was a good mod. I mean, guys, what do you think? Uh, that I'm not gonna no scrub of the day today, okay? I'm so sorry, guys. Check my other video today, and you know you may have been scrub of the day, okay? I'm sorry. It's it's been too long, okay? So I'm gonna have to stop this. But guys. Uh, don't forget to check out the mods down below guys are the the creator of the mod down below I didn't get the exact name. Um, oh, it's by Oliver. All right, so thanks Oliver It's it was really awesome. I really enjoyed it And if you guys uh, you enjoyed this and you want me to play more I would definitely like to play more when it does come out. I just think the writing was really really good I mean, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm biased. I guess it was about Natsuki. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway guys leave a like if you enjoyed this video be sure to subscribe and hit that sub bell so you don't miss out on any more videos guys I'm BG Mike and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye